When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. Welcome to one of the past HC exam question videos. In this video, we we'll cover this exam question, which comes from the theory of acids and bases. I'll do in a second, I'll read the actual question. Once you read the question, you have about 5 seconds to pause the video. Once you pause the video, attend the question and press play when you're ready. The question itself is 25 ml of 0.12 moles per liter standard barium hydroxide solution was titrated with nitric acid. Results are recorded in the table below. These are our results. A. Write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction of barium hydroxide with nitric acid. That's with one mark. And B. Calculate the concentrations of nitric acid. That's with three marks. So when you're ready, pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. All right, so for the first, we have to do is we have to obviously do the balance equation for the barium hydroxide reacting with nitric acid. Now, they assume you know nitric acid's chemical equation because there's a couple of questions that came up in a couple of chapters, past chapters, where you need to deal with nitric acid. So the chemical equation is HNO3, and for barium hydroxide, you wouldn't have to memorize it because the reason why you don't have to memorize it is because you can check what barium hydroxide is on the periodic table should be given in the exam. So you can see barium itself is a group 2 metal, which means it's going to donate two electrons. So it's going to be barium 2 plus. So we know barium will be barium 2 plus. It wants to give away two electrons. Thereby we need to have, it also has these hydroxide ions in it. So hydroxide ions themselves will actually accept one electron. So one hydroxide will accept one electron, which means if we want to have barium and hydroxide together, we need to have two hydroxides. So if we have two hydroxides, that means it's going to be minus two, and it's going to be all good. So the actual barium hydroxide is BaOH2, and nitric acid is HNO3. So now knowing that, we can do our chemical equation, which is this here, barium hydroxide plus nitric acid, so our base and our salt, coming together to form, so our base and our acid coming together to form our salt, which is barium M barium nitrate. And the reason why we have a 2 here is the same reason why we had a 2 here with the hydroxide. Because you can see here we have HNO3, H plus 1, which means the NO3 must be minus 1. So we have barium, which is still plus 2. Each NO3 is minus, overall minus 1. So for it to be balanced, we need to have two of those, which is why we have two nitrates here. So overall, that would be still be minus 2. And we've got water as well, that forms as part of our neutralization reaction. Now it says you need to have a balanced chemical equation. And if you have a look at the actual equation, at the moment, it's not balanced. So what do we have to do? Well, we have barium 1 here, barium 1 here, that's fine. We have one nitrate here, we have two nitrates there, which means that's not balanced. So we would put a 2 in front of here to make sure our nitrates are balanced. But the problem is now, if you look at the hydrogens, we've got two hydrogens from barium hydroxide two hydrogens from the nitric acid, which means we've got four here, and we only have two here from the water. So if you put a two in front of the water, then the actual hydrogens are balanced. And if you have a look at the oxygens, they'll also be balanced. So by balancing it, we have to put a two in front of the nitric acid and a two in front of the water, and now it's all balanced. And that's important because this first step is what we need to be able to answer the second step properly. So for the second step is we need to calculate the concentrations of nitric acid. And what we need for that is we need to have, to calculate the concentrations, we need to have number of the volume and number of moles. Now we have the volume here that's given here, but we don't have number of moles. But because of these above reaction, above chemical equation, we can figure out the number of moles once we figure out how many moles there are in barium hydroxide. Because one mole of barium hydroxide will combine with two moles of nitric acid. So if you figure out the number of moles of barium hydroxide, we can figure out the number of moles of nitric acid. And how do we do that? Well, we've got most of that given up here. We've got the volume given, 25 mils. That's a volume of barium hydroxide. And we've got a concentration given, which is 0 0.12. That's our concentration. So if we put those numbers into our equation, so concentration equals 0 0.12, that's our C, equals number of moles, that's what we want to figure out. And our volume is 25 mils. 
25 mils is the same as 0 0.025 because we have to put it into liters can't put it down as mils so now we rearrange the formula we put the volume to the other side to have n by itself we get 0 0.12 times 0 0.025 equals a number of moles so that is 0 0.12 times 0 0.025 equals 0 0.03. So that means our barium is 0 0.003 moles. All right, so N equals 0 0.003 moles. Well, now that we have the moles of our barium hydroxide, and we know that one mole reacts with two moles of nitric acid, that means whatever we have for barium hydroxide must be doubled to get um, a number of moles of nitric acid. So in that case, it would be 0 0.006 moles, as that's the doubled of the one of 0 0.03. So if we have that chemical equation again, uh, sorry, that that same reaction, what do we have now for nitric acid? Well, we have N, which happens to be 0 0.0006 moles, and we can figure out volume because we've got the volumes given up here. Now there's four numbers. The first one you should ignore. Why should you ignore the first one? Because usually our first titration is a rough titration, which means it's not going to be very accurate. So if you include that in our average, the actual average will be a bit inaccurate. So you're not going to take the first one, you're just going to take the next three. You get the average out of those three to make our volume. So we've got 18.1 plus 18.2 plus 18.1 at 54.4, that's all three together. So to get the average, we divide it by three. So that's 18.13 18 18 mils. That's a volume. Remember, we're going to have put in liters. So it's going to be the same as 0 0.01813 liters. So that's a volume, 0 0.01813. One, three liters, but it's not asking the question itself is not asking for volume, it's asking for concentration. But now that we have our moles and we have our volume, we can calculate our concentration. So if we put that into a calculator, we put in 0 0.006, because that's a number of moles, 0 0.006, divide that by the volume, which happens to be 0 0.01813, we should get our concentration which is zero, so concentration is oops, concentration is 0 0.33 moles per liter. And that's the answer. So you get for the answer, you get a mark, and for the correct sequencing to get there, you get a mark, and you get a mark for the balance equation. That's overall, that's four marks out of four. And where did that question come from? It came from this little stop point. Perform a first investigation to solve problems using titrations and the preparation of a standard solution and, and use available evidence, blah, blah. But the part for this one was solve problems using titrations. So solve problems using titrations. That's what this question was all about. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.